One of the things that we'll learn about, the first thing that we'll learn about that you'll use categorical propositions in standard form for is to work proofs. There are two things that you have in your toolbox in order to work a proof. The first of these is the traditional square of opposition. Next, we'll look at conversion, obversion, and contraposition as a second set of tools. But what the traditional square of opposition does is it's an arrangement of lines that illustrates the logical necess necess logically necessary relations among the four kinds of categorical propositions. So let's start off with that reminder. An A statement is all SRP. An E statement is no S. RP, an I statement is some S RP, and an O statement is some S R not P. So what the traditional square of opposition is going to do, and by the way, we are not using the modern square of opposition, only the traditional square, if you've seen that in your textbook and are curious about it, what the traditional square of opposition does is shows us how to relate each of these categorical propositions in standard form to one another and help us to work proofs. So how is it set up? It's set up literally in a large square. The A statement is always represented here in this top left corner, the E statement here, the I statement here, and the O statement there. That's where they kind of live. And here are the relations between them. The simplest is between A and O and O and A. This relationship actually goes in both directions. And it also connects I and E and E and I in both directions. This relationship is called the contradictory relationship. Now what you'll have from an argument, and we'll look at an example of this soon enough, is that you will know the truth value of one of these four statements. Let's say it's A. Let's say that A is true. And you know this from the argument that you've been given. I'll show you how later. For now, it's enough to say it's just given. If A is true, then by the contradictory relationship, O will always be the opposite truth value. So if A is true, O will be false. If, on the other hand, A is false, O will be true. They're just always going to be the opposite of one another. If you started off with O being true, you could say that A is false by the contradictory relationship. If you said that O was false, you could say that A is true by the contradictory relationship. And the same works for the relationship between I and E. If E was true, then you would know that I is false. If I was true, you would know that E was false and so on and so forth. A second relationship on the square that's used quite often is called subalternation. It's on both sides of the square, the right side and the left side. It connects A and I and it connects E and O to one another. But this relationship does not go in both directions. Here, truth can only flow downward and falsity can only flow upward. Same on this side of the square. And what that means is that if you know that A is true, for example, then that truth can flow downward to I and I will be true. 
but it doesn't work in the opposite direction. If we knew that I was true and that's what was given, truth only flows downward. It does not flow upward. So we would have to figure out some other means by which to determine the truth value for A. In the end, what we're gonna do with the traditional square of opposition is to fill in every truth value for every one of the categorical propositions. If I were false, however, falsity flows only upward. So falsity could flow upward to A, and we would say that A is false. But again, the opposite would not be true. If A were false, falsity only flows upward. It does not flow downward. Truth flows downward. So we would have to figure out another way to determine the truth value of I. This relationship also works exactly the same way on this side of the square connecting E and O. Truth can only flow downward and falsity can only flow upward. The relationship at the top of the square connecting A and E is called the contrary relationship. It has a rule that says at least one has to be false. So let's think about how that might work. If I had a true A and I was trying to figure out the truth value of E using only the contrary relationship, I could do it. Because at least one of them has to be false, the A is true, one of them between A and E has to be false, so we know that it must be this E. However, if A were false, for example, then it would already meet the condition that at least one of these has to be false between A and E connected on this part of the square. So we would have to, again, figure out a different means by which to determine the truth value for E. The same if E were false. Then the last relationship on the square is at the bottom connecting I and O. It's called the subcontrary relationship. And instead of at least one having to be false, the rule here is at least one must be true. So again, if we knew that I was true, then we'd have to figure out some other way to determine the truth value of O. Because I already meets the condition that at least one of these two is true. However, if I were false, we would know that O was true simply because at least one of them has to be. And the same would go if you were looking at it um, from the perspective of I being true, I'm sorry, O being false, or O being true rather, then you would know, we would have to figure out some other way to determine I, but if O were false, we would know that I was true. So you'll start off with an argument. You'll put it into standard form, which I'll show you how to use very soon. And then you go do immediately to the square. You hear me say this a lot. Where do you go? To the square. And what are you gonna do? You're gonna figure out which one of these you have the beginning truth value or the given truth value for, and you'll figure out all of the different truth values on the square. So for example, if we knew that A was true, we can use any of the relationships that we've learned to determine the truth value of the other letter statements. So if A is true by the contradictory relationship, which is the simplest, then O is false. Falsity flows upward, that can flow upward to E. 
And because E is false, we know that I is true. In that example, I didn't use contrary, the contrary or subcontrary relationship, and that's okay. Use whatever relationships accurately, of course, but use whichever ones you feel most comfortable with. Usually that's going to be the contradictory relationship and subalternation, but sometimes you'll have to use the contrary or subcontrary to get the correct answer. Also, don't be concerned if, and I'll show you an example of this at some point, but don't be concerned if there is a truth value that you're unable to determine on the truth square, I mean, on the traditional square of opposition. Just simply put a question mark and leave it at that. And that is how the traditional square of oppos op opposition works.